Well, in that case, I will uh, I will open the meeting and uh, remind everybody that this meeting is being recorded. Um, and I give up on this download. You know, I was having trouble with mine too, although that one's not till eight anyway. Um, David Eisen is here from Abacus. I don't know if you prefer to um, be, at least begin that conversation first or? Yeah, what's, what's our, let's see. What time is our bark and rolls at eight o'clock? Eight o'clock, right. And the subdivision is continuing. So. Yeah, I, I saw that, so. So um, yeah, I I, uh, I I suppose we could start with Dave and and uh, and then we'll uh, um, continue Crestview and go into the bark and roll thing. So okay, okay, uh, Mr. Eisen, very nice to see you. Hello, nice to see you. Even if we're back to doing it on Zoom. Uh, a lot well, less live for me, so so uh, not such a bad thing. So I thought what I would do, and this is picking up on what we talked last time, is there is there are kind of two components to what we did. One was an exploration of all, all the wonderful things that could happen, and a, another was sort of after talking to a series of developer, um, talking about a more, I, I, I suppose you could call it realistic approach to development if there was a, um, a private sector development partner. So what I've done is put these two components together to kind of tell a more complete story. So I thought I would run you through this presentation. There's a fair number of bullet points and I wouldn't read all the bullet points. Danielle, I sent this to you in a um, Dropbox with the idea you know, that that it could be passed on in whatever form. So I thought I would do screen share and run 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 through this. Okay. Um, so can every, everyone see that? Yep. Okay. So um, did we start by, and the idea is that this is for the selectmen, it's for community meetings, it's for landowners, it's for anyone who's interested in this process, it's for the whole town, with the idea that there is a kind of vision here for what this, um, you know, corner uh, could be. It's still called town center. Um, I know we've talked about not calling it town center because you do have a town center. It didn't seem like downtown was quite what this might be. So that's something something to think about and happy to change it to whatever um, shows it in relationship to the town. In all of these, um, Main Street is running horizontally. So uh, uh, north, is, north is to the right for, uh, pretty consistently. We talk about our planning study and what we're asked to do and what we've accomplished to bring, bring people up to date on that. Um, we talk about the fact that at one point, this might have been a thriving area, but at this point, maybe there are higher and better uses of the land as the town has grown. We talk about the fact that there's an overlay district here. So the kind of density that we're talking about was anticipated in the zoning ordinance. It's not like this is zoned just for commercial. It's not zoned just for residential. Um, I don't know when that was, but the overlay district was was initiated, but 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 that's in place. Um, talk about um, you know wetlands topography, you know root this in the realities of the site. Martinsburg on the left, the potential of flooding, it's certainly there, but but um, not imminent threats. We don't believe. And you know the virtues of having natural areas around the site. Um, we talk about the multiple ownerships, but half the site's under one ownership, so that's perhaps a challenge associated with this. Um, so we talk about the opportunities of this site because of the location near Martin's Brook. Uh, it's a prominent thoroughfare. You know all of the reasons that the town said, "Wow, you know why don't we see what could happen there." And then we also talk about the challenge as high speed traffic, no sewer service, although um, that's potentially a little out of date. Um, private ownership, no public transportation, 
Um, these are some of the challenges. No property is without its challenges. Um, we looked at package treatment plant and said for, hey, you know, three million bucks, we could um, put in somebody, whether it's a public sector, private sector, put in a packaged sewage plant that um, would really allow development to proceed. However, um, there's a plan in place for doing a, let's call it a real sewer system. Um, and I know you're doing the study and the blue line is where it would run and you can see the property in orange um, that would need a package treatment plant um, could really help jumpstart um, appropriate development, which I'm assuming is why the taxpayer said, well, hey, let's study uh, installing that. So now, you know, the, there's a town green, um, call it a town center. There isn't a lot of vitality and activity happening there, the kind at least that would be associated with the downtown. So we looked at some options for creating it Maine in winter, that the kind of civic spaces that have life and vitality. We talked about town greens, pedestrian streets, market squares. These go back hundreds and in fact, thousands of years. This is what people have done to create centers of civic life. So we talk about, you know, one option for town green and you can see it's sort of tucked in back. Uh, another option where it's right off of Main Street and you can see, you know, sort of a conceptual development um, shown here. And then some pictures, you know, this is what it could be. This is a little bit different than what's there now. You want to center, this is what other cities and towns have done. We're not inventing this. Again, this goes back thousands of years, but it's been done in cities and towns all over the country where people say, wow, you know, we don't want to have to hop in our car, uh, you know, to go from shopping place to shopping place. Let's have a center. And all kinds of things can, great things can happen there. And I think, you know, I th my guess is a lot of people in North Reading would say, that's pretty cool. You know, could we really do that? And of course, the answer to that is, well, maybe it is not a slam dunk. But, you know, let's dream about what the town wants. And, and again, we have not done public outreach. You know, often projects like this, we will reach out, we'll have big public meetings and ask a room with 200 people on it, what would you like? So we're just guessing here, but there aren't many people who wouldn't like this kind of activity in their, in, in their neighborhood. Mm -hmm. um, another opportunity is a pedestrian street. So everything isn't automobile oriented. And, and again, you know, you've seen this before. I mean, this is the, the site um, with a different layout and a kind of different version of that. You know, in all cases, there's, there's open space to the left, the community building, there's open space to the right with um, stores and restaurants and housing up above lining it. Now, I'm not going into lots of detail because there's nothing new that you haven't seen and heard in a public presentation might go into more detail about what we're showing here. I'm sort of, you know, rushing forward here. You know, here's a pedestrian street. There are older buildings in this pedestrian street, but could be new buildings as well. You know, this is another civic center, town center, downtown opportunity, some more pictures. Um, Market Square, uh, that's, a, that, that, that's another possibility. Rather than a pedestrian street or a green could be oriented around a market square that has the Christmas market and it's got the food trucks and it's got the flea markets and it's got bands Saturday night and it's got fireworks and it's got all that great stuff. This is where people come and they're shopping and there's restaurants and all of that. You know, a town green, you think of it's primarily green space. Here, the idea is it's surrounded by retail and commercial areas. Um, it can be much smaller too. There are a lot of different ways of doing this. And then given the fact that there's a big um, sort of in, call it industrial commercial building that, you, you know, should say job lot, it's certainly not empty. Um, in fact, it's full, but maybe offers opportunities. And here's an example in Colorado, an old industrial building that was redeveloped um, 
in sort of not a particularly auspicious location for it. But man, oh man, it's pretty cool. My partner took these pictures. He was there. Like really great stuff. Not a market square outside, but a market square inside and in some more pictures. So that's the kind of opportunities we talked about. And then we started talking to developers because the conclusion was the town wasn't going to pay for all of this. Um, maybe the town could pay for some of it, but to harness the power of the private sector. So we talked to a series of developers. And first thing they said is, there are three things that are appropriate here, housing, housing, and housing. And yeah, we could do commercial. Yeah, we could do community space. But that's a money loser. You want to do community space, the community needs to pay for it. Yeah, if we can get enough housing, we can do retail. But no bank is going to have that work towards our bottom line. And talked about some of the financials. In the fourth bullet point, three-story development, I'm going to skip over that for a moment because when we first started this, we thought, you know, let's look at three-story development because we heard from this committee, people don't want four and five-story development. So, um, you know, we need to accommodate cars and, 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 you know, I might change the, the order of this because what we had done, some of these comments are in response to what we haven't seen yet but we're talking about parking and where it might go. Uh, we referenced PAX treatment plant, maybe this time next year. No one will even be talking about that because there'll be a sewer. Um, build support among landowners. That was a critical, critical point. The town does not own this land. You're completely dependent on the willingness of private landowners to buy into this vision, whether it's the town's vision or private developers or some combination. Um, and, you know, some suggestions about how to increase the perceived value of the land for potential developers and the landowner. Can you get, you know, uh, bikes, charging stations, uh, bus service, service, walking trails, improvements to Route 28, which is, which is being investigated, and get some activities on the site. You know, nothing public happens here. Flea markets, you know, all the things I listed, Christmas markets, you know, um, put a great big tent and have some cool stuff happening underneath. Daniel, you and I were talking about this. So some ways to, um, you know, jumpstart the public perception of the land. So, so, you know, some of those realities, but not all of them made their way into a revised version of the plans that you saw you saw before. So these are more, call it real, if you expect a private developer to pay for it. There's a lot less retail um, and it's a lot more housing and a lot more parking because this is kind of the reality. And we still have the idea of on the left, you have a public use and what that might be, depends, green space, adjacent to Martins Brook, um, um, green space on the corner. Understand, there's a donut shop that's doing quite well there. And, you know, maybe that can, maybe that can stay. You know, the thought is, let's look at this as if it was a clean slate, although we completely understand it's not a clean state slate. If you get your coffee there in the morning or if you own the donut shop, it's hardly a clean slate. So, I'm assuming anyone who sees this, and maybe we need to preface it, is these are conceptual plans. There's going to be no taking. Uh, private property owners need to be respected because they own the land. I mean, there's no choice to it but to, res um, but to respect them. Um, so this shows three-story buildings, um, you know, one-story retail in the front. Um, some of them is three stories of housing, some is two stories of housing over retail. And this is kind of, this is how it lays out with the kind of parking that's generally expected to go with this amount of residential development. So there's still retail. And what I showed you before was photographs filled with people. And these are just, you know, very conceptual photographs. Could get some life, could get some vitality. Um, this could be great, especially with retail on the ground floor, not unlike some of the things we showed in the photographs. 
um, some more views, there's green space, um, more green space. So next, recommended next steps after digesting what we heard from potential developers. We really need to increase the heights from what we've shown in the last slides, that's three floors, really not even four, five and six to get real developer interest, you're likely to need five or six floors. Um, parking on the first floor in, in, in some of these buildings, we know nobody likes that. This committee didn't like that, but what we're hearing from developers is if you're gonna get in the requisite parking and the enough housing, that's the most cost-effective way to get parking in there. Parking garages are too expensive. Underground parking is way too expensive for this site. You're in Cambridge, you're in Somerville, you're in parts of Boston, sure, put it underground, but probably not here. Reach out to landowners with the development vision. I mean, we think working with you, there is a vision that is really exciting, but you need to get the landowners on board. Reach out to North Reading stakeholders. That means everybody who lives here, you know, this could be totally great. You know, it's, it's not easy, but we can get this done if there's enough support for it. Advocate for improvements for the area, and I listed some of those. Advocate for a public building on the site, and this will be interesting when the Public Facilities Committee really shifts into gear where there's any interest. And I'm working on that project as well, very separate from this project. Um, Warren, you may be the big connection and Danielle. Um, I, I'm trying to figure out how to be on both of these projects at the same time and serve the interests of the leadership. Engage one or more developers who may be interested. So I talked to a number of developers. Some of them said, get back to me when you talk to the landowners. You know, if you have landowner interests, happy to meet again, but you know, the hour I gave you is all I'm going to give until we can get some inkling that there's some interest in selling or, or development, hire a development consultant to pursue market studies. So we got freebies for all, all of these developers, people we've worked with, people who are genuinely interested in the possibility, but I'm getting the sense no one is going to put in much time until some of these other bullet points have been pushed forward. And this shows on the upper left, um, building shown four stories and five stories, you know, could it be less than six possibly? And then crunching some numbers here, and these are all numbers you've seen, which suggest how many spaces, how many units, you know, how this might actually work. So that's the kind of beginning to end story. Um, and, you know, looking forward to your ideas on what next steps are, what you do and what, you know, what, what we might do for, to, to, to keep this moving forward. David, uh, <clears throat> is the 18,000 square feet that you're using for community is, you know, give the, describe what kind of building that is. Is it the one you're going to show in the slide back from there, or is it um, a, a standard you know, community center size building. That, that's that's a nice size community center. That's a probably a multi general multi generational community center that has a series of activity rooms. If it had gymnasium and a health club, it pushes closer to thirty. If it were just let's say it was just a senior center, and it probably won't be, or a more limited community center, it could be eleven thousand square feet. There's nothing hard and fast, even remotely. Right. Okay. Um, right. Okay. Dave, you make it sound so easy when you just explain it all. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you read the bullet points, I rushed yeah. through those bullet points. There are no real bullet points you haven't seen. Um, yeah. It, 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 it isn't that easy when you look at the details. Yeah. So, Dave. Well, I, Go ahead, Dave. Sorry, sorry. Was it, we got a lot of room. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, so, David, what when you mentioned you're working with the facilities, what what kind of uh, you know, just in general, what what kind of scope do they have you doing for the public facilities study? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, this is it's been two years since they two years year and a half since the last meeting. So on. 
Thursday is the first meeting in almost two years, so we'll find out. It's really, it's a survey of all the public buildings in town in plotting. Okay, I'm aware of that. I'm aware yeah. of that. I thought you were doing some actually design um, or trying to consolidate you know, some design ideas for what buildings they may, may need, uh, but where they're doing the inventory though. But. Yeah, I think the fire station is the highest priority. Um, I, I have exactly the same question. You know, we'll know quite a bit more uh, Thursday night. Got it. I mean, one of the one of the things back to our our work here, our study, that, um, and I think you have a one of your slides touches on it, and because of the complexities of the property, I think often that um, there's a marriage potential with the existing building that's there um, being repurposed uh, with its kind of, uh, you know, size of the, the bays, its heights, it's, uh, it could be conducive to a, um, you know, a reuse that is similar to some of this, I think one of the slides that you had that your partner had. And I think that could be maybe the foot in the door that provides the, uh, the public side, the community space um, and then some other interesting spaces so that, you know, you have the building, it's already built. Um, you have uh, an owner or an ownership group that probably it seems like is more interested in leasing than selling perhaps. Um, and, you know, perhaps then the, the town becomes more of a, a tenant to a, a space among others perhaps. And, and then, so you're able to even, you know, being very aggressive here, but even move town hall there. I mean, it's 70,000 square feet. So move town hall there, put community center in and just, you know, the whole inside would just be um, really interesting and open and you'd be able to walk down same concept as a high school down Main Street, if you will, and go to these different parts and pieces of the building, uh, given that square footage that really satisfy a lot of the program requirements that you're looking at and the town's looking at right now through the facilities. Um, we have a town hall that's, that's very old. Um, it's a school, you know, former school. And, um, you know, th so there's, when you start to add all the different programs that might be out there, they actually would work in that, that building. Um, and there's a lot you can do to the facade. So that might turn people off just thinking of it, but you've got a really good shell there um, and you've got a parking lot and everything already there. And so you could build off of that perhaps. Um, and, and that could interest developers because you have all that program happening in that building. So I like, I like thinking of that. It's just, where do you start? <laughs> but you know, that's just an idea because it is such a complex site. Well, but one of the, one of the questions about reuse of that existing building, I mean, we're planners, we're also architects, and we know from experience to uh, adaptive reuse of existing buildings is often more expensive than new construction. By the time you meet energy code and meet functional requirements, you're left with nothing but a steel, steel structure that's probably up up, not up to existing code. So the reality is it might be cheaper to tear it down um, than to reutilize it. However, it, you, it, you know, we need to study it. We need to study the existing building and what you want to do with it. So to hold that out as a possibility is, is certainly a good thing, but don't want to go too far down that road without doing, um, doing an evaluation. Right. And in some ways, we've worked on a lot of complex sites the, to me, I think the biggest complexity in this site is the ownership. If the town yeah, owned the site, you know, um, it would be a pretty simple site. Absolutely. Yeah, I think that the other, one of the other things about looking at that particular building and trying to get some development to happen there without anything else happening is without, and the, you know, that's one of the reasons we had some of these other studies done. But without the people, um, enough people close enough or within walking distance or, or with travel distance to it, it won't be a successful situation. And that's why the housing is so important. It's, it's all part of the package. So that's why we, um, that's why if you, even if you did develop that, Dave, without the development of the rest of the site in some fashion to provide the customers for this location, 
it could fail. Yeah, Warren, I, and I, I, I absolutely 100% agree. I just meant that, you know, you get, that's the first in perhaps that then draws in the developer um, to, to you know, buy the other parcels of land and, yeah. and develop the other parcels. Well, I think one of the one of the bullet points in the begin towards towards the beginning was to create some excitement on on the site with uh, things like a flea market and and, uh, and things like that. And I think that's a that's a, a possibility. And one of the things that comes to mind is many years ago the business association did uh, something uh, similar to that for the um, for the residents uh, in the in the Walmart parking lot. And uh, I, I don't know. Uh, I don't think Walmart was there at the time. I think it was uh, next door or something else. But anyway, um, uh, Siemens it was. So um, basically, we just took over the whole parking lot and everybody set up little tents and booths and and um, you know all the realtors and the stores and the horseshoe came down and we had a, different companies came down, brought their you know a lot a lot of the contractors came down, brought their big yellow pieces of equipment. And the kids could play on them. You know, I mean, it was a and it was an, a it was an event. Um, and they wanted, they did it a couple of years in a row, once there and once at another location. So, so, um, uh, but that, that kind of thing, that, that, you know, bringing that back to life. I mean, there's a lot of, um, uh, the EDC could put something like that together. There's signs out to shop the Reddings, you know, Reading and North Reading. But, um, so, 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 uh, another little expo, if you will, similar to that, using this site with the permission, of course, to stop the shop. Um, would uh, would be would begin to bring would we begin to show people what's possible there? Here it is outdoors. This could be indoors. I think that's kind of what you were going after there. Because one thing, if you had an event, you put up lots of boards saying, "Okay, you're here on Saturday afternoon because there's a big parking lot and it's a convenient place." But be aware. This is the first teeny tiny step in a long-term vision. Look where yeah. we want to go and combine today with what's planned for tomorrow and next year and the year after. There's a well, tipping I, point where people rethink all of their assumptions and can you reach that tipping yeah. point? Yeah, well, I think that's, I think that, 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 that particular bullet point kind of maybe start thinking about, you know, that, that uh, that's probably true. If, 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 if a couple of things could happen there, uh, a couple of events could happen on that site, so that people would associate um, that site with events like that, like flea market or like an expo uh, for the businesses and things like that. They'd begin to see the the validity of of, of of an indoor site, and then then you could begin to get some public support for it, and then maybe you get the uh, owner support for it as well. Now, I mean, something. Right now, I, I feel as if we have no starting point. And um, that hit me just tonight, um, reading all that, that maybe that maybe there is a starting point there. I think there is, but someone has to take ownership because all of the things we're talking about, they ha don't happen uh, on their own. They, they happen when somebody says, we can make that happen. And they're on the phone and they're snagging their friends and just saying, hey, Here's a vision. Let's buy into it. I think a question is, you know, who would that be? What group or individual person? Well, I do think that the, um, I do think that the, and, and I really, you know, I was involved in the business association back then, and I think I was president of it, and we got these this thing started, these events, and um, and um, and I think it was it, it was uh, beneficial to all of the people who came. Um, all the restaurants came, everybody came, but it was a pretty big, pretty good event. And so um, I'm, I'm wondering, I'm thinking that, that perhaps, you know, maybe there's a missed opportunity without bringing that to the EDC and saying, you know, you, you, you're wanting to advertise all these people, but here's a, here's a way for people to actually come out, you know, and get some free tidbits, some, you know, a, you know, a pen, a, a, a uh, uh, a taste of something that the horseshoe makes, a taste of something that the uh, Chinese restaurant makes, that kind of thing, you know, to uh, and, and, and get people interested in, in it. So that might be, and again, I, I'm, I'm just, I'm, I feel like we're starved for a starting point. And this is Jeremiah. Um, you know, I'm, I, it makes me think of the food truck park that they've done in Middleton, yep, which was right. an empty plot next to that school there. 
And, uh, you know, and it's, you know, they've only got, I think, four food trucks there now. But, you know, I drive by there often and it's got a nice, vibrant bit of activity going there. Yeah. And, you know, and I think that with the popularity that we've seen with outside dining since COVID and the push from restaurants trying to get more outdoor space, that parking lot is a good opportunity to try to, you know, tap into that kind of, um, you know, community desire for those kind of things and assuming Stop and Shop would support it. You know, I, I'm curious, like for that, that Middleton project, I'm curious who did that. I don't know if it was like a town initiated thing or if it was a completely private kind of uh, uh, project, but you know, if it works over there, I have to imagine it would work even better in a parking lot like that. It's closer to businesses, a lot of mm-hmm. lunch crowds and stuff like that. And then if you tie it together with a theme, you know, you'll get a weekend and evening crowd too. Um, you know, it's like, I, I've spent a lot of time in uh, Germany around the holidays and nothing compares with the German Christmas market. And I think there's a lot of people who wish there were things like that here. And all it takes is a parking lot, you know, and then yeah. you tie together yeah. the food trucks and some vendors and the people who make arts and crafts and you know suddenly you've got something with some traction and farmers markets yeah people and i don't know whether there's a the farmers market i mean the problem is the shortage yeah. of farmers everybody we do, we do have farmer. a farmers market over at ipswich River the park they, they do during wednesdays in the summertime yeah but so, uh, Jeremiah, so you're right you're, you're right though that the, that we go there all the time, and I think it was started from the gentleman that has the had the lobster yeah. um, truck, and then he um, it's his property, and then he you know lobbied the the town to allow um, them to do more, and now they have I think it's five trucks now based mm-hmm. on the count that I was. But you're right, you'd have to work with Stop and Shop, but I think the key is perhaps from the town's perspective that we support it because that that'd be Stop and Shop is like with the town and even allow us to do this, but because they would stand to make rent off it, but what we'd be doing is creating buzz, creating a space, um, much like what they've done in Middleton off 114. It's a destination, it's a cool place to hang out. And all you really need to do is try to put the parties together really, right? And then us, the town, support it. I think that's the key, we have to support it. Well, I think also too that, you know, putting putting together a solution you know, to kind of take care of some of the logistic problems, you know, bathrooms, you know, porta potties, things like yep. that. If the town puts up the money to put together little things like that and some signage, um, you know, I think people will fill the space if we take care of that part of it so that they don't have to right. worry about it. Right. And you've got the infrastructure much more than, than that gentleman had. I mean, you, you've got a full parking lot, you know, traffic signs, uh, spaces, all the, all the things that they don't really, or didn't have, uh, they they've started to create them now, but you're right. Yeah. The facilities would be the one missing aspect that they, they were able to put in uh, this year that, that really makes a big difference there. Yeah. Well, that well, also stop the shop. Good. Don't want them going to use their toilet. Well, I mean, there's state. also a, uh, there's, there's a controlled intersection there too, you know, with a set of lights. So you, so it's, it's a yeah. safe yeah. access and egress. It really is. It's like that lot could, I think that as Jeremiah, I think would agree that that lot could easily accommodate what they're doing in Middleton. You know, mm-hmm. um, so. Yeah. Well, you know, it does, it, does it sound like everybody that this is a, a suggestion we might want to pass on to the EDC? Absolutely. Absolutely. And Again. that we could support it. And then uh, I don't know if, if we would, be a point person as far as uh, trying to contact, you know, the property owner, and then and maybe the um, and uh, also just investigate within town hall what they would want for permits and what they whether they would uh, be supportive of it. Right, I'm sure Board of Health is primarily, you know, so yeah. it's safety obviously and and fire safety, but. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, there's there's, who there's, there's those um, trucks so. Uh, there's precedents out there because we, we for many years when we did the Fourth of July, we had all yeah, of the yeah. uh, the vendors there, uh, all, mostly all nonprofit vendors, who um, we we just they just had to have uh, instructions circulated about how hot they had to keep hot food, how cold cold food, and and things like that, and and um, and the board of health would just go you know go around check on them, make sure, and they were all did really well. We never ever had a an issue from. I don't know, 14, 15 years of doing it, we never had an issue of food poisoning or anything like that. So, so you know, you know, it can be done. 
No, food oh, yeah. trucks are a pretty modern business these days, you know, Very and modern. especially the ones operating down in the city. There's pretty stringent rules. So uh, I, I think that, uh, and I, I think the one in Middleton shows that, I mean, it's, you know, food trucks are hip for a reason. I mean, it's a real, it's a great opportunity for the clever, you know, restaurateurs. And a lot of them are looking for opportunities to, you know, build their audience and, you know, uh, towns that give them those opportunities, I think will reward them. Yeah. Yeah. I, lo I love it. Yeah. So maybe this is something that we uh, put together a little no notice, uh, I mean, a little um, suggestion of some kind and present it to the EDC to see if they're interested in sponsoring it. Because it would be, it certainly would be in their wheelhouse. They're doing similar things. I'll, except I'll volunteer to do some, I'll volunteer to help, you know, Danielle and get some information and images and stuff of certainly Middleton, but perhaps other ones nearby. Yeah. Just to give it some visual as well. Well, we're getting a little bit far afield of our original discussion here, but it, well, but it it's just really, like, but, but Mr. Chairman, it's, I think it's, it goes back to the spirit of what we talked about at our, our meeting in August, which right. is we need that thing to create the buzz. And we touched yeah. on a little tonight, but I think that's the thing that makes this place place, if you will, right and creates the makes it into a place. Well, when I when yes. I read that one line tonight, it just struck me right then that this was this was something that we could actually do. Right. And we could do it without having to take town money. We could do it without, you know, you know, by getting a bunch of people together and and, and um and putting it put, putting it forth if we can get the permission. So at the same time, if I can interject, uh, I mean this is this this is so encouraging to hear this. But some of the landowners, from what I understand, are looking to sell their property. You know, so at a certain point, it seems like property owners are going to just sell out, do a little development here, a little development there, a little development there, if all of these great things you're talking about aren't seen as part of a bigger picture move that will right. turn out to be really, you know, successful it'll be a great year or two of Christmas markets and then it'll all get sold and, yeah. you know, it'll be a nursing home and it'll be, you know. Well, I think if they, I think if they see uh, something like this happening, um, that it will help, it'll, it'll, it'll focus, it'll give, uh, they'll be able to focus on the possibilities that they just can't th see right now. They'll begin to see yeah. in reality some of the possibilities actually happening, even though, they didn't uh, buy in in the beginning, it's gonna be in their backyard. So they'll have to see it. And they'll see that possibility happening. And then they'll begin to believe that this is something that could be done. And, and I think this is, this, is, this is part of the, uh, and then and, and the town fathers, seeing that the people in the town like what's happening there and want to do it, it might be easy to get them on board as well. So, um, so I so think this point, is, if we want to do something with this whole project, I think this is a, this is the next step. So the point of this presentation is to arm you for moving forward with landowners, with other committees. Um, so one of the things to do, I sent this to Danielle, couldn't shrink it enough so it was emailable, is for people to read this through. Um, you know, a little more carefully, read all of those bullet points, think about things like if it's not town center, is it downtown? And, you know, get back to me with comments like we like this and this and this, but can you do this and this and this because it'll better arm us, can make those changes. And then if you wanted the outside planner as opposed to the inside residents to a presentation or two, could go to a public meeting and say, hey, this could be done. Here are some great ideas. Um, you know, and then if people get annoyed, they get annoyed at me rather than you. <laughs> and half the people are annoyed because it's like too, you know, dreamy how this can ever happen. And then the other half get annoyed because it's too real. Like, where's the vision? And that's, you know, that's fine. Um, you know, you're doing it right if people are attacking you from both sides. So, so that's a thought about kind of next steps um is is take a look at this and you tell me you know there's next steps for you and there's next steps for us and we sort of want to close out 
our contract, not because we want to take off and never see you again, but because we, we want to give you something useful. Um, so this is a successful project. Okay. Um, does anybody else have any questions for David at this point? Um, um, we've got to move on to a public hearing that we have, but I didn't know. What we, so is this this so this is a presentation that you would come and make to the board to the select board? Is that what I'm understanding? Yeah. Yeah. If that's if that's what you want, and again, I would encourage you to read the fine print. Um, yeah. Um, yeah. And, and, and get back to me um, on what yeah. works, what doesn't. Can yeah. I collect some feedback from the CPC members over the next week and yeah. filter that yeah. back to David so we can be, so we can give him the feedback he needs to kind of take the next step? Okay. That and one thought is we package this up and you email it out or whatever to, um, to landowners. I mean, that's up to you. Um, but let them know you're serious. Let them know that some solid work's being done. Thinking ahead, you know, um, bring them to the table. Okay. So should are we going to leave it there for now? You're going to get on to other business. Yeah, I think um, I think we know what we got to do here. So, uh, um, but I think we also we need to. Well, we'll we need to look this over and 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 decide if you want to make any changes in it. Um, okay. Presenting it to the select board and presenting it to the people do, would give us a uh, um, an opportunity to let them know that, as you said, there's been a, a lot of work done. There's been a bunch of uh, uh, there's there's a vision that we have, and there's a vision that's been developed as far as we can develop it at this particular point, and that we uh, let them know what that is, and then then move on. I think in that, if we begin to do something that, that is a little piece of that vision, as we were talking about earlier, that little piece of that vision that begins to develop maybe in over in, in that parking lot, um, people will become believers and we can move along with it. So you know, I just have to see how that works out. Okay. 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 So I'm gonna take my leave then and we'll, we'll all yes. be David, I thank you so very much. You've been a great, you've been a great helping us with this and working on it. I know you've put a lot of work and a lot of thought into it. And um, uh, we very much appreciate your work. And I appreciate what, what you're trying to do. So thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, David. Okay. All right. So um, we have... I think what we'll do first is uh, we'll do the continued public hearing since there's going to be a request to continue on that. So, uh, so next up will be Crestview Estates. And do we have a, a formal request to uh, continue to November 2nd at 8.30 p.m.? Do we have that in a motion or? We do not have it in a motion, but I can make one. Um, uh, I move that the CPC uh, grant the applicant's request to continue the Crestview Estates uh, definitive subdivision review till November 2nd at 8.30 p.m. Okay, so Dave, why don't move. you so move that? So moved. Okay, and Jeremiah, if you would second it for me? Second it. Okay, so uh, I have a motion and a second to continue. Um, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Let the record show three in favor and no opposed. Uh, there are only three members uh, available tonight. Okay, that will allow us to move on to 72 Main Street. And um, bark and roll. So we, um, we have, do I have uh, Francina Yula making a, do we have somebody making a uh, presentation on this? Hi. Hi. Yes, go ahead. I'm here, how are you? Good. Um, so I'm do, sorry, do we, we should probably read the public hearing okay. notice. Uh, okay, yeah, yeah. Yep, okay, we have, uh, do you have it there or? I can pull it up. Okay. 
okay. Would you like me to read it? Uh, here we notice it was an application. Read it, continue. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Unless you, I, I could do it if you want, but go ahead. Oh, sure. Um, <clears throat> Town of North Reading Community Planning Commission public hearing notice. Notice is hereby given that the North Reading Community Planning Commission will hold a virtual public hearing on Tuesday, October 19th, 2021 at 8 p.m. on the application of Francine Coughlin for a site plan review for the property located at 72 Main Street, North Reading, Mass. Um, map 2329 uh, parcels, uh, excuse me, map 23 parcel 29. You may participate on the hearing online. Um, the dial-in information is given. Uh, hearing is also broadcast live by NORCAM on local government local access channels 22 and uh, on Comcast and 24 and Verizon and online at NORCAM.org. Um, a copy of this plan may be viewed by visiting the Community Planning Commission website um, and this is advertised uh, September 30th and October 7th, 2021. Okay, and thank I, you, Danielle. You're welcome. And I do just want to note that we have three members present tonight rather than four. Okay, yep. Okay, so uh, do I have someone who's going to make a proposal on this or let me just go back. Okay, just has everybody read the uh, the, the um, notices in your uh, share file, the ZBA, for example, approval. Yep. And, uh, um, so forth. Do, do we I have, any, have uh, one? I did have one question. Because uh, I noticed that they that there was the discussion about um, the nature of which you know the dogs going to be let out in the back since it's not going to be fenced in um it sounds like there was a conversation um you know uh to address that but the details weren't really in there so i'm just kind of curious um is it going to be like basically always on a leash you know yes you know, what, what basically there are going to be i imagine cars going back there from time to time um, so just what kind of safety precautions are going to, without offense, what kind of safety precautions would there be? The, the dogs will have to be on leash. Um, there aren't trucks allowed back there uh, oh. during during the uh, operating hours. They think they're only allowed, and I don't quote me on this, but I think it was like 11 p.m. Like, I think they're only allowed back there overnight. Um, so, of course, we'll let our clients know, please, of course, keep an eye out in case a car goes zipping past there, but it'll just be like, Anywhere else, it's pretty quiet and empty behind that building, to be honest, from what I've experienced. Um, you know, if we have any concerns, um, further concerns, of course, we'll we'll find a way to address them. But for now, um, walking on lead to the area that they allowed us um, back there, which is really just a, a, a hydrant like area with some grass that they keep maintained, which is very apropos for the dogs, um, as long as I, you know, make sure we maintain it, which we do anyway, we, we do the same procedure. Um, even though we have a fenced yard at Bark and Roll at 211, um, when we have clients come in for class and when they go out for potty breaks, they take their own dogs out on leash outside and walk to our areas where they can, the designated potty areas. And we have a potty station um, that we always make sure have um, poopy bags and um, a trash can right built into the station. So we'll be providing the same thing at um, this location in the back. Um, you know, the, the dogs that are there uh, for class, I mean, if they do a quick potty, um, they usually come to class potty, but if they have to go, we usually do, depending on the age of the dog, because we do have adult dogs that come to and generally hold hold their bladder throughout the class. Um, but if we do have puppies and they need a break, we do about halfway through the class. Classes are about an hour. Um, we allow them to go out for a quick break, get some air, because, you know, they're babies, basically, and they need a break anyway. Um, and they'll usually do a potty outside quickly and come back in. So people don't usually want to miss too much of the class because it does go by pretty quickly. But um we don't have really any concerns at this time about, you know, any sort of major traffic going back or anything. Of course, it's something we'll be aware of and um, make sure that our clients are aware of as well. But yes, of course, on leash only. Okay, great. Thank you. Of course. Okay, so um, I noticed they do, they have hours of operation in there as well. Um, just go back to that. Here we got here. 
because uh, we did comment on this before and we sent our comments off of, uh, um, and they did address a, a, a bunch of the comments that we sent to them. Um, it seems, the site seems a little restrictive for you anyway. I mean, with the conditions that are there. Um, it is a second location for me, Warren. So it's, um, it, it, it the restrictions that are placed on me um, work for this particular use. Um, it is for training class. So really I just needed an open space where we can have chairs around the room and have clients come bring their dogs on leash and have puppy class. Um, we were, we have um, built up a, a pretty uh, large business right now. And with everybody getting pandemic puppies, et cetera, we have a large demand as do as everyone else in my profession has right now. So we are trying to get a second location so we can accommodate and get our training off um, our 211 location and just have that just strictly for that because we also have a lot of private clients that wanna meet and we just really needed an open space. So for us um, and having a small retail section in the front in a plaza where there is some foot traffic, um, you know, I felt that for now I, do a one, I did a one-year lease for now just to see how it works out for us. Um, I do think it's a, a nice little spot for um, what our intended use is at this time, but we do do, you know, have that 211. Um, so this really is more of a, just a training only studio as if you would need like, you know, a dance studio or a gym. And I kind of yeah. was looking for that sort of open space. Well, I think that part of the, 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 what are the, one of the things that occurs to me is exactly uh, that and that it is a, Place where there's a lot, lot of foot, where there is foot traffic, uh, there's a bit of it, and um, and not all dogs are friendly to all people. So, um, uh, the I'm just was wondering about the interaction between a lot of people bringing dogs back and forth and the people, um, you know, the foot traffic that's there, as opposed to your other location, which you really don't have a foot traffic issue there. It's very much just your just your business basically coming in and out of there. So. So I don't know if and that's a consideration. It's really not too um, too much of a concern for me. Most of the dogs coming in for us are puppies, and um, they don't really have any serious behavioral things going on. If we do have a client that needs behavioral consideration for some reason, um, you know, we would go out to the car and walk them in. Um, I don't really foresee that being something that's like a regular occurrence for us because we have so many people who just want to bring their puppies in or want to bring their dogs yeah. in who are already yeah. in the intermediate or advanced level. So their manners are actually quite good. Um, and our focus is on humane education. So um, we make sure that our clients are also um, you know, handling their dogs appropriately, kindly, um, not using shock collars, prong collars, things like that. It's part of our philosophy. Wow. So we do, um, you know, we're heavily based on the education. Even our first class is actually humans only so that people aren't distracted by the dog, come in and actually understand the philosophy, talk right, to each right. other. If any dogs do have any sort of shyness, things like that, we get to know that on the first night um, right. before they even bring their dog to class so that we can make any accommodations needed if they need to come in at like 10 minutes earlier and acclimate to the space. Um, but, you know, we, I don't think that, you know, knowing the foot traffic there generally people pick their destination from what I've seen and they park near Marshalls and they're in and out of Marshalls. And then I've even seen people and I've done it myself. I'm not going to lie, drive all over Walmart knowing I'm going to get a load of, you know, a, a cart of things and I'm going to have to load that into my car. So it's, I don't really see people milling about too much over there. I mean, occasionally, mm -hmm. but not too much to be honest, because I'm at the dollar store frequently. I'm at Walmart frequently just getting supplies and things yep. like that for the facility but so I'm very familiar with the place I think if it was a place where like people hung out and stuff I wouldn't really want to be there but right. people seem right. to kind of go to their intended place and go to their cars um of course you know if people see dogs we have an issue if we know a class is coming of course we'll stand outside we'll make sure that everybody comes right in and there's no you know interaction with the general public if there's a concern but um, I think mostly we zip in and out. People are there on a mission to get their dogs in, yeah. get trained, and get out. And you know, the focus really is on behavior. So um, okay, so so um, I, is uh, Danielle? Can you? Um, I couldn't get the site. As I said, I didn't get the site plan to open. Can you? Open? 
I have it on my screen. Oh, I'm Maybe sorry, Francine, would you like to screen share it? Or I do can. you want me to do yeah, it? Yeah, I can if, if that oh, works. Oh, sure, okay. I, think I was I actually have... having trouble opening mine as well. Okay, I don't know so why. Uh, well, just okay, so what, what, what our job tonight basically is to do a site plan review. And since that site is pretty well developed, it's pretty well landscaped, it's uh, everything is uh, all done. Uh, I don't really see um, us looking at too much of that. Um, I think primarily just looking at the, the site uh, at the site plan just to get a look at uh, um, where it is in relation to other things and then take comments from the board. And then of course, if the public hearing side will open it to the public for comment. So um, yeah, to clarify, that, uh, I think this Warren, this is the uh, it's it the, the files labeled site, but this would I would refer more as a floor plan, and then there is a site plan. So uh, Francine can maybe show us the the floor plan here just to give us. Uh, look, yeah, I see the floor plan, or or some of it anyway. Yeah. Um, yeah. So do you, sorry, do I you sent actually... over I sent over a, a, a something from the rental company to me about the entire site. Um, I don't have that handy, um, but um, I, share I that if you like. Right okay, I did um, submit it. I just don't have it right on my. It's going to take me a minute unless you guys have it. I I can share it. I don't know if you want to talk about the floor plan first, and then yeah, I'll talk about the floor plan. Sure. Okay. Sure. So when you enter, um, the dollar store is on the right. Is everybody familiar with the site? Mm -hmm. yep, yep. Part? Okay, great. So um, dollar store is on your right. Um, the entrance is here right now. It's the current GNC space. Um, AAA is on the left. Um, from being in the chamber, I do know my neighbors um, and they're all lovely. So we walk in and then we have um, the lobby area. We're gonna put up a half wall um, with a door, the swinging door. And that is about all the construction I have planned for the space. Cause again, it needs to be open. I wanna put that space in there um, just as a sort of barrier for the dogs, um, an extra barrier um, before you get to the door to the parking lot. There's the main room space. And then we go um, through the door towards the back. There's a break room area there. There's two bathrooms. And then you head straight out to the rear exit. There's a couple of stairs. And then the parking lot is back there. Um, and then if you walk sort of straight back to the right, you'll hit the little potty area out there, which I do not have drawn on this plan, but um, I did send it. Okay, Danielle, do you have the site? Do you have a, a site plan? Sure. Um, let me. Okay, if you want to close, Francine, if you want to close your sure, screen. Sure, absolutely. And I will. See if um, Danielle has it. Okay. Uh, it's just, um, primarily, you know, we know, but primarily for anybody that wants to come in, I want everybody to be able to see, you know, what we're looking at here. Just. Let me see. I, ha I have it open on my screen, and for some reason, I'm having a hard time. I have it, Daniel. Sharing it. Oh, you do? Okay. I. It's odd. I. I it's not coming up on my menu. You, you want to give it a try, Dave? Yeah, oh, I'm sorry. I should stop sharing my screen. Um, I'll pop it up. Thank you. Go ahead. Can you guys see that? So just to get oriented right here, because this is more of a, uh, you know, like you said, a survey plan. Francine, where are we here? <laughs> I'm trying to get my bearings. Are we frozen? Uh oh. Um, I'm looking at. There you go. Hang on a second. We were kind of frozen there, so I just stopped sharing. I don't know if that's on my end. <coughs> you want to retry there, Dave? Or are you? Yeah, I, I uh, I went blank. So hang on. I'll try it again. You guys see that? Yes. Yep. Okay. So Francine, help us. Uh, where is, where are we in this thing? I wish I knew. I can't even see with my eyes and need glasses on this thing. So Can you go to Nutter that? Road? That could help us. Where's Nutter Road? There's Nutter Road is um behind it. So Walmart is to the left. Is that right? Hold on. What about the number page two? Are you able to go to the second page? I'm just wondering. Maybe if that's it's on page two. 
Yeah, <laughs> that's an easier okay, one to go. look at. Okay. <laughs> So we're kind of down in here somewhere. Okay. Yep. So, um, yeah. So, Great the bank, was, yeah. so the bank is still there. Marshall's is still there. Um, then we've got uh, what is the now first, AAA. Think, right where it jogs. What's that? I think that's, aren't you first after Marshall's and then I'm it's not. Uh, AAA? Nope. That's oh, AAA. Okay. And then so AAA's I'm first. Okay. I gotcha. I'm between AAA and the dollar store, and the dollar store is closest to Walmart. Yep. Got it. Okay, so you're just in here somewhere, slim, maybe where those steps are. Where's the parking lot? I think where it says. Yeah. I think it's daycare play area. It says. What is that? What's in there? I mean, so th since it, for me, for me, Mr. Chairman, since it doesn't yes. really change the site or anything, I'm not very concerned about the, you know, like where we have other applicants that have to have everything correct. You know how I can be sometimes when there's missing information, but with something like this, I don't, I don't really see this as being a problem. Like, I, I would accept this plan, you know, if this is kind of the plan of record, you know, I would accept this plan for for the use. I mean, again, I've I've read the C, the ZBA September 16th decision. Yep, yep. We discussed it uh, a meeting or two ago, so I'm I'm very fine with everything here. And it, yeah, and Francine answered all the questions, you know, about the outdoor stuff. So sure, yeah, I think that's, that's just. I mean, I, I agree that the ZBA thing does that. They they did answer. They did take the questions we gave them, and they brought them forth, and they. And that it looks like everything's been addressed. So, um, okay. Well, thank you, Dave, for your screen share. If you yep. were to take yeah, that yep. down, what I'm going to do is open it to the public for questions or comment. If anybody has a question or a comment, um, uh, let me know. Some have it put a hand up or do something to let me know that you would like to <laughs> comment. Uh, if uh, if you don't don't want to go uh, visual, then just kind of unmute yourself and begin to talk, and we'll see what we can do. So I'm looking for any comments on this park and roll uh, application. I will tell you, Lynn Verney and Team Bark and Roll are with me. They're uh, okay. my directors, um, so they're just on just to make sure that they're clear on, um, you know, anything we discuss. Right, right. right. Well, I'm I'm, I'm hearing none uh, on that, so um, I don't uh, I don't think is there anything else that you uh, that uh, members of the board want to hear or see or you've got uh, Dave you've made your position clear Jeremiah. Uh, no, and actually looking at the photo again, I can actually see the little hydrant that you were talking about and the little yeah. uh, pipa, and I assume that that photo is taken from the perspective of the back door. It is. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I've I've got no concern. Okay. All right, so then uh, hearing no comments or requests for comments or questions, and I'm going to close the public hearing. And um, you, uh, uh, if everybody's uh, prepared, do, oh, do we need four votes for this? Change I'm not sure how you want to handle that, but we only have, we only have three members present tonight. Yeah. Yeah. Do you want me to text Ryan, see if he can jump on? I know he was like, he kind of said, Danielle, that he would jump. If he on can, so yeah. If he if he can. But if he hasn't been if he hasn't been part of the conversation, although although he does have everything that we have here in his share file. Uh, right. So perhaps he can. And if he can't, worst case, um, I guess we would have to wait for another meeting, which I would. Uh, it seems like you've already been down the road away, so. Um, I mean, I would say too that there's no permit, like this board isn't giving permission for the use that's already yeah. been done. Right. So right. in terms of, um, you know, it's not as though an, an appeal would do anything um, negative to the application. There's nothing that's been proposed that this board would mm -hmm. be, um, you know, yeah. allowing or not allowing. But. 
Yeah. But we had <laughs> yeah. nothing yet. But if we just give it a thirty more seconds, if we don't see anything, then I don't think we will. Yeah, we can see. So, are you suggesting that we just that we try to take vote with only three members? No, I don't think that you can. Um, no, I don't think so either. But in terms of the project itself, I mean, there's nothing that you're approving yeah. that Francine needs well, to do. You know what I Francine, mean? She could yeah. probably go ahead with what she. Although I, I shouldn't say that. I. Yeah. I yeah, don't honestly. There, there I don't know. What the right there may be a statutory requirement on her end to have approval before they'll let her. So I mean, Possibly. I would probably not want to subvert that. Right. No, you're right. So, um, well, I'm going to have to. Um, we'll have, we're going to have to leave it that we'll have to wait till the next meeting to vote on it, Francine. I hate that. I sorry about that. Uh, Brian just said he'll be on in one minute. Thank okay. You, good. You're saving my business. <laughs> yeah. Taking care of business, you know. Yeah. Yeah, Ryan, Ryan, unfortunately, he's not feeling it. He's sick, I guess, Danielle, and we all got an email just before the meeting. But he said he would get on for something like this if we needed him. So good man. Yep. Yep. Where is Chris, by the way, today? Uh, D.C. He's away. Oh, wow. What's he doing down there? Computers, laptops work in DC. I know this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, I use mine from South Carolina. Come on. Yeah. Yeah. I use mine from Indiana. I work just, I right, had a whole right. meeting from Indiana. So there he is, the man of the hour. Oh, Did you, uh, I'm, I'm assuming that you read your packet so you know everything that's in there in the ZBA. Approval, which basically is the approval is coming from the ZBA. We're just doing site plan. So, if you are comfortable with that, we'd like to uh, go to a vote. Uh, you'll have to unmute yourself. Yeah, Ryan, this is for bark and roll. You got to unmute yourself, Ryan. <clears throat> apologize. Yeah, I, I, I'm up to speed. I apologize. I meant to log in for this segment. I fell asleep, so I'm uh, yeah. I'm up to speed. Okay. All right. Okay, then um, do we have a motion? Do we have the, there, is there a motion in here already? Oh, there is a draft. Actually, motion, but not there is not, but there is a conditional okay. approval. Um, I can make a motion. Um, okay. And, and Ryan can so move. That'd be great. Thank um, you. Sure. Okay. And there's the draft conditional approval, which I hope everyone has had a chance to look at. Um, yep. Okay, so um, I move that the Community Planning Commission um, move to approve the site plan review special permit for a change in use uh, for Bark and Roll, as shown on the plans titled Bark and Roll 72 Main Street, Unit 3A, North Reading, Mass 01864, drawn by Summit Design Build, dated September 10th, 2021, as amended this evening, subject to any conditions? Okay. That's more a and question. Ryan? I didn't know if you had any conditions you wanted in there. I don't think we put any conditions on it. Okay. I think that, again, I believe uh, that, like Dave, I believe the ZBA took care of business here, so. Okay. So, so Ryan, you will so move? So move. Okay. And uh, so seconded can... by, by Dave. Okay. So, um, so I have a motion to second. Is there any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Let's let the record show four in favor, no opposed. Uh, Chris is on uh, vacation, not here, so just the four members tonight. So I uh, thank you very much, and Ryan, thank you, sir, very much for coming on and helping us out and helping Francine. Thank you, thank you so much. Really, no problem. I apologize for the delay. Feel better. Feel better. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Night quill. Where you go? <laughs> Back to sleep, Lance. Yeah, yeah. yeah. All righty. All righty. There you go, Francine. You're all set. Um, you Thank can, you all uh, for your time. Good luck. Yeah. Yeah, good good luck, luck with business. Luck. Yep. Okay. Let me just get back to.
this. Okay. Well, actually, I think that was our uh, swan song. Yeah, we're all. Oh no, I'm sorry. We got minutes. So we have the minutes of nine seven twenty twenty one. So um, we'll make a motion to approve the minutes of 921, 9 7 2021. Mr. So Chairman, I move to approve the minutes dated September 7, 2021. Okay. And do I have a second? Second. Yeah, I have a second by Mr. Redlock. Okay. Any changes or, or omissions? Hearing none, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Let the record show four in favor, no opposed. Uh, Mr. Hayden's absent tonight. Um, Mr. Carroll, 9-21-2021. Mr. Chairman, I move to approve the minutes dated September 21st, 2021. Okay, I have a second. Second. Second by Mr. Redlaw. Okay, any uh, cha omissions or changes? <laughs> Hearing none, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Let the record show four in favor, no opposed. Mr. Hayden is absent this evening. Um, there you go. Ryan, you are released. Thanks, Ryan. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it, guys. Thank you. All righty. So the only thing we would have left would be planning administrator update if there's anything you would like to bring to the forefront. Sure, I'll try to keep it brief. Um, so there's a possibility. The What's that? <laughs> you say that all the time. <laughs> I know, and I never mean it. <laughs> that was my point, um, of course. <laughs> possibility. Ahead, oh, that's okay. Possibility of a discussion of uh, housing next steps um, at the select board meeting potentially on November first. But I, when I know more, I will let you know um, if that discussion would be taking place. Um, I wanted to just let everyone know the attorney general's office approved all of the zoning amendments from the June town meeting, which is good news. Um, mm -hmm. With regard to the housing article for Mr. Wheeler's um, uh, project, that one, everything remained as is approved, but we were cautioned on a few items having to do with fair housing. So um, for example, the restriction on two bedrooms per unit um, may or may not be fully allowable, but it was not stricken. So. Um, I've discussed that with town council and we're recommended to just leave it as is. Um, also for 55 and over, uh, the manager of the, uh, of the condo complex or the condo association is required to send in um, a certain uh, information every two years uh, just to be sure they're complying with all of the regulations right. for uh, 55 and over. Um, and also the local preference scheme that was put into the zoning was also right. somewhat called into question. So those are all things we'll need to review and we may need to potentially make a few changes with special permits as um, the time comes for us to review that project. But I just wanted to share the news that that uh, zoning was approved. So that's great. We should expect to see a filing on that soon, I think. Um, okay. For just a couple of upcoming meetings, we've had some uh, applications coming in one is for 92 Concord Street. I think I've mentioned over the last few months, uh, the building inspector has really been struggling with, there have been a number of violations on that site right. having to do with CPC conditions, among other things. Um, and one of the requirements um, that was negotiated you know, with town council and with the, uh, with the owner's um, attorney was a filing with the planning commission to attempt to address the issues and the changes that were, have been made on the site that were not approved. So we are likely to be having that hearing scheduled for November 19th. Um, that's if I get everything in, um, or if I receive everything, it will be November 19th, right. if not, right. it'll be the next one. Um, we also I, I got an application for East Coast Tree. Um, they were looking to locate at the 86 Main Street site, but unfortunately didn't get their uh, permit from the ZBA. So they'll be withdrawing, but it's already been advertised. So they'll be at our next, or they won't be there, but. This will be on our next agenda just for withdrawal, but I wanted to just explain that. Okay. Um, just a couple of things. Oh, I just received a notice that um, there will be a presentation of the age-friendly um, action plan that has been worked on. I believe that uh, Mr. Walner had been working on mm -hmm. with some folks in town um, on Thursday, the 28th. 
It's in the distance learning lab and um, it will also be accessible on Zoom. So I will try to attend that. Um, I think there are a lot of uh, planning related issues uh, with regard to, you know, the demographic changes that are happening. So what, that, what that day is that, useful. Danielle? Um, Sorry. Thursday, October 28th. And actually I can get the time. Um, let's see. Oops, excuse me. Um, just had it in front of me and now I don't. I believe it's in the evening. Um, Okay, Thursday, October 28th at, and there's no time given. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, I'm rich. sorry, no, more information, <laughs> click here. <laughs> no worries. Um, 6.30, doors oh, open at six, know. presentation 6.30 to eight. So um, that should be interesting. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see couple of new grants that we're looking at. Um, the North Reading gets two more community compact grants this cycle, which is great. Um, one of those grants, I believe, will be applying for um, some funds to offset the money to be spent on uh, sewer planning. And that would be with regard to financing, betterments, assessments. Um, I'm, I've been working with the DPW director to come up with um, a draft scope, which I will share with you um, once we have that. But we've made a lot of progress, especially it was really helpful hearing, um, you know, the CPC's input a few weeks ago about what was not as successful about the first time a study like that was done. And right. um, this is really a very different approach. And actually, the focus is more on how to pay for it, how to finance it, what will the impacts be, um, not just with tax revenue, but what will the impacts be to the users um, and how will that work for everyone? One of the things I'd like to know, you know, because again, all the time I spent with Weston and Sampson and, and they, they, they downplayed the, the issue of financing as something that was routinely done. And it was done through the state revolving fund, the SRF. And, and they explained it any number of times that, that, the, that you could put the whole thing into a package and, and, and take it to the SRF and, they, and, then, and, then, the, and then you set up, and then of course you have to, have, there's the act of the legislature which sets up a commission for the sewer. I mean, I, I suppose, the thing is I'm afraid that the town is trying to take this on as a town thing instead mm -hmm. of setting up a district and a commission which would then be responsible to pay the bills. Because if you could stay in the front of town meeting and say, there's gonna be a district, there's gonna be a commission that's run by, by, uh, by uh, st stakeholders in the, yeah. in the district and there'll be officers and everything and, and they will bill the people who use it and the money that comes in from the billing is what's used to pay the SRF back, not your tax dollars. And the only thing your tax dollars will, are, are gonna do is to, um, um, pay for the town's use of it. Well, you know, you know, for hooking the town up, hooking the, the schools up, or hooking the fire department up, or police department, or any of those, those, those hookups. Is, you, you, you then be get treated similar to a person with a home that wants to hook up. The pipes out in front, but they got to pay for the hookup. Um, that kind of thing. So, so I don't know what's changed here, or has it changed? I can try to find out what's changed. It could be that. At that time, we were talking about a project that was a few million dollars, and now we're talking about one that's no. It was about fifty-three. So much more. It was about fifty-three million, and now it's double that. Yeah, I don't know. I can ask what's changed about it. Um, yeah, every time is I've the, ever heard this talked the about, it's revolving been... fund still something that we can access to fund this project, and how much mm -hmm. of the project will it fund? Those are the questions. Does it fund the whole thing? Does it only yeah. fund specific parts of it? What's the, you know, where's the line drawn? Well, I mean, the, the fund itself doesn't fund it. It charges someone, right? I mean. Well, yeah, yeah. So what happens is the state revolving fund lends the money. Okay. And then the, and they lend the money. To, and I think the, the, the you know, I, I don't know. I'm, what I'm not sure about is at what point, um, at what point do, do we um, create, I, it may be that we got to wait till we got a pipe in the ground to create a commitment, but I don't think so. I think that the, once the plans are drawn up and where we're going to go with that pipe, 
I think that's when you sit down and begin to put together a district and then you take the district to the legislature who gives you, because what the reason it takes an act to the legislature is because the commission has the ability to tax. Mm -hmm. They have to get permission from the state to tax and take money from people and, and to take whatever actions are necessary if the people do not pay the sewer bill, you know, liens and all those things that are available to any, muni any municipal service um, are made available to the commission uh, because they collect the money from the users, from the, uh, from the stakeholders and the users of the system, and they pay the SRF tax. Sure, but I think it's a matter of figuring out how much that tax bill is going to be, because we know we're going to tax people for it. So I think it's a matter of figuring out if it was only on the users, the bills, I think they were assuming the bills would just be so high that I don't know, no, but I will find it's out. It's a long term. It's a long term thing. I mean, it's a thirty year payback. You know, I mean, it's not a. Right. You know, they don't pay. So I, I, the only real, um, the only real issue that we have was, or, 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 or not that we have, but that exists is, you know, whether or not um, the betterments. In other words, if if it goes by your house. Uh, they was they were projecting they would have to pay sixteen thousand dollars in order to be, you know, because now that it's a betterment, so it gets added onto your tax bill, you know, brought out again over thirty years or twenty years or whatever the time frame is. Um, that betterment exists, and I mean, and I'm I'm familiar with it because uh, uh, a vacation home that my we have, they put sewer in after my father had bought it, and. Um, uh, mm -hmm. And that's what happened. Uh, you got a better minute, so mm -hmm. it's, it's all twenty years or whatever, and uh, you just pay it every month. And your taxes mm -hmm. are, are in, the, in their case, that you pay it directly to the commission, the sewer bill, right? Directly to the sewer commission, and they pay the bill. They pay for it. So, well, they pay the loan, the ISRF or whatever. So I'm familiar with how it actually works because I'm paying it. <laughs> so I don't understand why we're not doing that. I think maybe we are. I, I just, but I'll, I'll I'll find out more about that. It's I've just not heard anybody say that right at any of the town meetings, leading people to believe that the hundred one million or the hundred twenty million is going to come out of their pockets. That that's the no, no, definitely the there was. So what was handed out at town town meeting was a number of scenarios um, with different proportions paid by taxpayers users um well you various know, no, sources. taxpayers would te te technically taxpayers only pay taxes to cover what the town uses you know i mean in other words the town it's like the town uses water and that's you know paid for by the town mm -hmm. doesn't give itself a water bill the water mm -hmm. that the town is using is paid for by taxes from on us so we all participate in that so it's that kind of a thing so so um, the only thing the town would be responsible for, which would end up in any, anybody's that lives in McIntyre's tax bill would be whatever portion they pay that pays for the town, the schools and the, the municipal buildings to be hooked up to the sewer, whatever that number is, theoretically. Mm -hmm. So uh, that would mean that um, the rest of that money, so, so, so the way you were talking about the percentages is they have the town has the ability in the setting up of the commission for the town to mitigate that uh, betterment. Okay, so uh -huh. let's say the betterment is $20,000 which goes by your house. The town can mitigate that by saying, okay, the town's going to pick up 25% of it, so it's only going to cost you 15, again, over 30 years or whatever. Or the town's going to uh, pick up half of that. Or the town can actually say, no, the town's going to pay all of that. If the town decides to pay all of it, yep, you can bet it comes up on everybody's tax bill. Right. So I think that's what they're trying to figure out. How much of a share does the town need to take on? Because otherwise, the betterments will be so astronomical that no business will be able to pay it. I well, think no, that's what they're case, trying to figure out. In my out. case, for that family house, they didn't take any of it. We pay 100% of it. Everybody paid. Everybody in the whole area that got sued pays for the, they pay 100%. There's no mitigation. Right. But the math they did on that here was coming out really high. Really, really, really high. So I think that's why they're trying to find out how to offset it. Uh, but I will, I will find out more about, about that. Yeah. 
Yeah, because it's it's really uh, kind of unclear. It sounds like they got a superficial knowledge of what they're doing and and having and no depth. Well, I think they're trying to figure, fill in the blanks here. I mean, there are, yeah. you know, I I think that's what they're trying to find out. Yeah. Yeah, I, I like you know because Weston and Sampson seem to have a pretty good handle on the entire process, and and um, I didn't because because the people that came from the company that's doing it there they they didn't get a chance to speak at town they're all there probably would have been good to let them speak. Who Weston and Sampson? No, no, the with the company Pierce and whatever they are. Oh, right, there. Pierce. Yeah. Yeah, they they were there at the meeting. Yeah. They didn't speak. They they probably could have made a lot. They don't more have sense. the answer. They don't have the answer to this. They're they they they're, could have spoken to the possibilities. That's that's what I you know. So people would understand because right now, because I've talked to a few people since then that were at that meeting. And they're like, yeah, I don't know if I want to pay one hundred and twenty million dollars for somebody else to be able to flush their toilet. Then I, I said, that's not what's going to happen. Yes, it is. That's what they said at town meeting. So. Obviously, it's clear as mud right now, and and until somebody clears it up a little, I, that's that's why. I, if you can just a couple quick answers about the SRF and whether or not that's taken into consideration, and what okay. what part of that, and, and and at what point a district gets set up. So I mean, and, and uh, I mean those other right. decisions, like those other decisions that are made. Um, for example, you know whether or not the town's going to help with the with the uh, betterments or not. That's a that's a question. That that's that's something the town would have to do. The select board would be the ones who would decide that. It would be get presented to them what the costs are, and <clears throat> they could decide what to do with it. I think the only place where it would really be, you know, significant is in the pond area, because anybody who lives like on Ames Street or Burdett Road over there. They're paying thirty, thirty-five, forty thousand dollars. They would gladly give up just twenty to have a sewer pipe. <laughs> They'll pay the whole bill, you know, as opposed to what's costing them to put a septic system in with the groundwater so high they got to practically hang it from a tree. So you see, there's, there's, there's a. When we did this whole study, this for fifteen years, we developed a matrix, and that matrix is available still downtown someplace to show where all the high demand areas, where all the most impacted areas are and what the impacts are. High water, ledge, all those things. So it was all been done. It's all laid out in a, in a matrix that anybody could look at and see why we chose certain areas and where they're going. So, um, um, so there's been a, there was a lot of work done and that doesn't send it, and, I, and I'm not, I'm hearing a whole different thing from what they're talking about now compared to what we listened to back then. That's, that's, I'm just wondering why. What changed? I'll see if I can find out. Yeah, yeah. All right, I didn't mean to get carried away here, but um, after 15 years being on that wastewater study committee, million meetings, and then we brought it to the select board and, or at the time and they said, yeah, okay, let's put it aside. All that work still is valid. The land hasn't changed. The water tables haven't changed. The difficulty to install systems in different areas hasn't changed. It's all, it's all laid out in that in that uh, in that report. So, so all right. So anyway, that's you could you can continue on. I got carried away there a little bit. So sorry. <laughs> oh no, that's okay. Um... <laughs> The other community compact project we were looking at is potentially an assessment of um, whether North Reading could be, or what it would take for North Reading to become a green community and how that would impact us, um, you know, both, you know, financially and environmentally. Um, that's the other possible project we might be looking at. Um, and then um, I haven't forgotten about discussing accessory dwelling units with the development team. Um, we had to cancel the last meeting, but the November 3rd meeting in the morning is probably when I'll be getting some feedback from them, um, which I'll share with you. Mm -hmm. And then just a few issues um, coming from 
the Nutter Road side of Shea Lane, uh, Nine Shea Lane has really had some pretty significant issues with runoff and sedimentation going on to the properties over there. And I, um, I understand EPA was out um, recently and I've been working with uh, Dave Giangrande to, to try to make sure that that's being handled, but it, it has been difficult. So if you if you haven't heard, I just wanted to let you know that that's this been- what, what, What's going on? Does, do they keep losing their filtration controls or are their grades that's, not right? So the keeps getting overwhelmed? Well, that's one thing. Um, the silt fences keep getting flattened, but uh, you know, the, the pond over there keeps filling up with silt. Um, so it's at least, you know, DCI feels it's not always functioning correctly because of that. Um, there was an issue with the septic system. The grading is very different from what was approved on the original subdivision plan because when I release a lot, I only see the first septic plan. I never see the subsequent plan. So there was a subsequent yeah, plan, which, which Dave then did look at, um, and there was a swale added to it, um, but it's, it hasn't been enough. Um, and the runoff has been going uh, both, we think, from the detention pond up on that side and also from uh, the lot itself coming around where it's supposed to be managed by a swale and then go off into the woods, there's a wet area, but instead it's it's been spilling onto those properties on Nutter Road. So that's, um, I mean, I think that it has improved because there have been some fixes that have been put in place each time there's been a storm, um, but it's still not where it should be. So I'm just <laughs> continuing, you know, Dave is continuing to, to monitor it, um, but it's, yeah, it's, it, the neighbors have, have been understandably, you know, unhappy, so. Well, yeah, one would think that after the first time, you know, that, that an assessment of what caused the issue wouldn't be that hard to make and that a mitigating uh, repair should be, have been able to be done or, or change in the plan to, to solve the problem should have been done. I mean, you, you, don't get, you don't get runoff like that unless your grades are wrong. You know, is there faulty engineering there? So that's what that's what DCI wants to look at next, um, just to see what's not working about this. Um, but yeah. it, I mean, each well, time I mean, there's been a. I mean, you, you know, my basic point here is that that in order for these things, radical things to happen, there has to be uh, a radical situation. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> in other words, if you only had a, if you have a nice three to one slope. You're not going to get high speed runoff. It doesn't happen. But if you got a slope that's severe, then and then that can get that you can get high speed runoff there, and that can overtop filtration controls or anything like that. So, so did we miss something in the initial review? What, what I don't think so. <laughs> no, I think it's more the way that lot has been built out, and also the way the site's been managed during construction, like that. That project really looked at looks carefully at pre and post, but not really during. And so the during has gone on longer and has been more disturbed and less well managed than was expected. And so there's so much more silt and and but but there are other things too, heavier storms than were expected, um, detention yeah, ponds that have been too. allowed to silt up a little too much and have not really been um, you know draining as well or there yeah well that's features. because the drainage system is not really complete at this point. Yeah, it should it though. should be working. I mean, it should be working no better than it is. So, um, yeah, yeah. yeah. But okay. I'll keep trying to work with Dave to make sure things don't get worse or or at least are made better. So. Yeah. Yeah. Well, if we're going to continue, you know, I I think what if you're hearing from the neighbors there, they probably are are hoping that we. Um, do something that we, you know, at least, um, I know you said you're working with Dave, but that, that's fine, but we should probably provide them with a little input too to say, okay, you know, we're working with the uh, peer review engineer to come up with some solutions for you, let them know, you know. Yeah, I mean, I've met with them out on the site with Dave um, and have, you know, heard their concerns pretty much right then and there while Dave has, has you know, stood there and said, okay, well, we'll try this and we'll try this and we'll notify the developer and the builder that they have to do the following things. And then, you know, it doesn't always necessarily, I don't know, it hasn't, it, 
it's, it it's, always it's makes really me nervous when, Jeanette, and when an engineer says, hey, we'll try this. Well, <laughs> it's like, well, what happened to engineering? <laughs> it's not his job to design that site, though. Oh, I understand I mean, that. I understand that. So, so, so I mean, he can't that, really. That's back to my original point. Did we miss something in this original plan? But, or, or did he, if he started to build it incorrectly or it wasn't built according to the plan, then, then, then there needs to be something done about it. That's basically it. Yeah, I mean, part they of it should, is people that- People shouldn't continue to be, you know, after the fir first time, fine. You know, they made some mistakes. They didn't have everything ready. First time, fine. Second time, not so much. Not Third even. time, not good at all. No, no, it's, um, I mean, they've been given instructions. <laughs> well, it's a failure to fix it. And the to... third time, I mean, you know, it's, yeah. you know, it's, it's not that hard. You know, if when the original plan was done, peer reviewed, all of these slopes, all these things were taken into account. So the only way you'd be having a problem is if it wasn't built according to that plan. In which case, you know what the solution is make it conform to the plan or re-engineer it, bring it back and stop doing whatever you're doing until you re-engineer it and fix it. Mm -hmm. And I know what you're saying about in process because in process, in process when, when your total drainage system is somewhat incomplete and you have no grass on the yards, so rain does wash off, you know, silt, so you can lose your or ability of your infiltration system to handle things because it'll silt in. So there is some issues, but once the first time happens, then it's time to put silt fence around everything. Stuff's not a million bucks; it's cheap, but it puts a little work to put it in. But you know, well, they're you know. up. I mean, there's silt fences and socks, and I mean, there's all kinds of stuff that's up. But it's the volume of water has just exceeded what was expected. I think. Um, I, I don't know if this is the kind of thing where you know you want to see if if you know, DCI is available to help talk to us about what the issues have been and what we need to ask further from the developer. I mean, I know that- I, Dave I think at this has... point, we're all sitting there hearing about this from you right now. Mm -hmm. And um, and um, I think we should all know what's going on. What do you, what do you guys think? Dave? I agree. It's, it's, it's unacceptable. It's a, you can just see driving by the challenges that the site has. And you just mentioned, I mean, it's like the moon, right? There's no grass. There's no, I mean, just everything's running off, you know, right now. Yeah. So it's very difficult for them, but it's just so much has been altered that you're just dealing with 100% generated mm -hmm. runoff. And it's well, been- I, I, think, I think we'd like, I think we would like Dave to, to Gene Grant- So wet, and, all July, August, so. I think it would be good if uh, if you can at least at least get us up to date on what's going on. So if somebody from another road comes up to me and says, "What the heck are you guys doing to me?" I I have an idea what they're talking about. <laughs> do you want just Dave Grande to come, or do you want me to ask Dave Murray to come? I mean, do you want just to be briefed on what the issues are, or do you want more of a chance to talk? I want the solutions. Are, so the, I mean, you know, I'm you know I'm around town all day long. And so I hear, I talk to people and I hear about mm -hmm. things and um, they, um, when they ask me, what, what are you doing about it? I have to deflect it and say, well, you know, we got the peer engineer, peer review engineer mm -hmm. looking at, it. well, that doesn't help them any, you know, I don't really know what exactly what, how many times it's happened to what's gone on until I hear it from you. Right. So do you and want, I mean. Dave, and neither does Ryan or, or Jeremiah or anybody. So I just think we, we should be in the loop, that's all. Right. So I'm just wondering, like, I'm not, I'm just asking in, in, in terms of like next steps, how do you want to handle this? Like, it, I can if certainly can ask Dave. Grandy just for a short time at our next meeting, even okay. if it be on Zoom, just to yeah, tell, sure. just to update us on what's happened, what, what the, what the proposed fixes are and everything, and whether he suggests that we ask that the plan to be re-engineered and brought back. Okay. Okay. I mean, yeah, you know, I can really, definitely ask him about yeah, we, we shouldn't be, these people shouldn't be dealing with this on a continuing basis. I mean. No, no, they, they shouldn't. <laughs> this, the, the um, you know, we're, we're looking at 100 year storm designs here, you know, and we haven't had a 100 year storm. We're looking at 50 year storms that we haven't had a 50 year storm yet. So if all of those, if that engineering goes all the way up to that, how come we're having a problem with it, you know? 
Yeah, I can I can ask if he can come to our next meeting. Yeah. Anybody have questions? Okay. All right. We should know, that's all. Mm -hmm. Okay. <clears throat> that's it. That's it? Okay. All right. Uh, thanks everybody for coming tonight. Thanks everyone. Yeah. I guess we will Thanks see you guys. later. <laughs> well, good night. Yep. Uh, good night. All right. Good night, guys. Good night. Good night.